Hello viewers, welcome back to our lecture on Honoré de Balzac and the 19th century European realism. So a quick recap of what we did in the last lecture. We discussed the rise of realism in the French society. We also discussed how realism as an art form is was differently perceived in the French society as well as in the English society. We also discussed how the French revolution in the 19th century ushered in a new thought and how class and money became one of the dominant features of the 19th century European literature. Then also we discussed how Balzac's realism touches on his historical specificity and how historical specificity is one of the major features of Balzacian fiction. So now in this particular lecture, we will be discussing realism and the rise of the novel. So history of the genre of the novel is clearly and very intricately revolving around the concept of narrating what had happened. That is, showing the reality or imitating or mimesis of reality. So, the rise of the novel, for, so the genre of the novel is revolving around the concept of narrating what had happened. That is showing the reality. So, therefore, therefore, the history of the novel is intricately related to realism. Because there is always an effort by the novelist to capture realism in his work. Even the short-lived gothic novel mixed realism with the fantastic and the fabulous, like Charlotte Bront and Walter Scott. So there is this always this tendency, always an effort by the novelist to capture realism in his works. And when we come to the gothic novels, so it mixed realism with the fantastic and the fabulous like Walter Scott. And by the way, Balzac was highly influenced by the historical novels of Walter Scott. Balzac imitated Scott and he imitated him to such an extent that he used exact details, times and places in his works. Details of everyday life were not shown by the predecessors, but Balzac came out with it. And it was an instant hit in, his, in, in, in the 19th century French society. The different, however, is that writers like Walter Scott romanticized the past. Balzac, on the other hand, showed realism and the real fabric of everyday life in the society. Such is the level of historical specificity that we discussed in the last lecture and such is the level of historical specificity that Balzac adheres to in his novel. Now, history, history is also an obsession with earlier novelists. That is why earlier novels were actually called histories by the novelists like Afra Ben, Henry Fielding. Because there was always this tendency to capture the reality, to capture history as it is in the novels. And Balzac's novels are also historical entry points. And this is one of his key achievements that Balzac's novels are also his, his, are, are historical entry points to understand the history of France and historians even today and this is an interesting fact that historians even today still look at Balzac's novel to understand what happened in the first half of the 19th century French society, what happened in the first half of 19th century Parisian culture. So Balzac's novels are so historically embedded that historians still look at his works to understand the 19th century Parisian culture. Also, we cannot forget that realism was also an attempt to displace the sentimental novel which was running around at that time. So the novel as an art form rose as we know with the decline of romance as an art form and hence novelists wanted to dissociate themselves with romance. So romance was kind of a heroic fable of something imaginative but novel was more inclined towards the real life. And all of this is happening in the first half of the 19th century with full force, with full vigor. So this therefore also means that the novel itself is constantly developing. So according to a very prominent critic, Mikhail Bakhtin, and let us read Bakhtin's quote and I am quoting him. Mikhail Bakhtin says, and I am quoting him, the novel is the only developing genre and therefore it reflects more deeply 
more essentially, more sensitively and rapidly reality itself in the process of its unfolding. And only that which is itself developing can comprehend development as a process. So therefore, according to the famous Russian formalist critic Mikhail Bakhtin, the novel reflects reality as it is ever-changing, as it is constantly developing. So therefore, therefore, the significance of realism as an art form, the significance of realism as a literary form is here to stay and it must be evaluated keeping in mind its constantly evolving limits and contours. Even the philosophers and the writers, they realized that in the late 18th and the early 19th century, that the man is shaped by his environment and heredity, that the man is shaped by his immediate surroundings, that the man is shaped by his immediate nature, his immediate surroundings, the environment. So this was the effect of the Enlightenment period as well. So in the late 18th century and the early 19th century, it was realized that a human being is shaped by his environment, by heredity. So realism is not just about a new literary form. So it's not just a new literary form which gives attention to details. It is definitely about a new literary form which gives attention to details. But it is also very importantly about how man and society is changing in a rapidly changing 19th century world. Right? So realism is not just about a new literary form which gives attention to details where the authors painstakingly note the various surroundings. But it is much more than that. It is definitely about how and what are the various social forces, the various social forces, the social realism of Balzac as we have mentioned, as I have mentioned in my lecture. So it is also about how man and society is changing. What are the various social forces? So the, so the stress on social forces is very important. So this one point is very important to understand. So therefore, the realism of the novel is not just about the kind of life it presents, but also in the way it presents it. So therefore, realism, particularly 19th century French realism, was much more than about simply giving attention to details. And Balzac, Honoré de Balzac, is one of the most prominent, one of the most prominent novelists who captures these details very effectively in his work. And to refer as an entry point to his realism, we will be reading Old Man Goriot. So therefore, the significance, as I mentioned, of realism as an art form must be evaluated keeping in mind its constantly evolving limits and its constantly changing nature. So this was a brief intro, a brief idea about realism as an art form. And now we'll move towards Honoré de Balzac. And we'll also be reading about Balzac the man, Balzac and the Balzacian works, what comprises of the Balzacian jungle. So we'll be also laying some stress on the Balzacian jungle, what exactly we mean by the term Balzacian jungle. And we'll also be reading some of the very prominent features of Balzac's fiction. And as I mentioned, as an entry point to understand all these aspects, we'll be reading the very famous novel, Old Man Goriot. So all the different examples that I'll be giving will be based on Old Man Goriot by Honoré de Balzac, published in 1835. So, a very, uh, you know, Balzac once said that he is, and I am quoting him, the secretary to the French society. So, Balzac has taken upon himself the work of a secretary. What is the work of a secretary? A secretary organizes, interprets data, right, in an almost, in an almost inorganic manner. So, the work of a secretary is to organize data, to interpret data, to note down the reality, to note down whatever he sees around him. And this is exactly what Balzac does through his novels by using realism as an artistic technique.
So Balzac himself has said in one of his works that he is a secretary to the French society. And also, Balzac wrote Old Man Goriot in 1835. It was published in 1835. So in the first half of the 19th century, we have the post-revolution French society. And this post-revolution French society was so disorganized that it ultimately gave a lot of material to him. So the post-revolution French society gave a lot of material to Balzac as the society itself was disorganized. And hence, he took this secretarial responsibility with much ease. And this also makes it very clear that Balzac took his vocation as a novelist very seriously. And therefore, therefore, we, I believe that he is a conscious and a deliberate realist in that sense. Because he has taken up the responsibility of a secretary, of interpreting the data, of noting down whatever is happening in the society. And this is exactly what he does in Old Man Goriot. And not just in one work, but in all of his works. So the French novelist, various French novelists like Balzac and even Stendhal, who was his contemporary, so they were not interested in factories, the chimneys and the urban conglomerations like their Victorian counterparts in England. We have to note this. So these writers in France were not interested in factories, in describing the chimneys, the urban conglomerations like their Victorian counterparts. But rather, they were more interested in showing the decline of the landed gentry, in showing the decline of the aristocracy. So this was their version of social realism. So we have repeatedly mentioned the social realism that Balzac was a part of. So this was Balzac's social realism. He was more interested in showing the various social forces that were at play when Balzac was writing his novels. Now, even the Romantics tried to show life in England. Since we are talking about realism as representing life as it is, even the Romantics tried to show life in England. For example, Wordsworth does that in his nature poetry. Even Blake does that by showing the condition of young kids in chimneys and the desolate life of London. Even Blake does that, even the Romantics do that. But the Romantics and, and the Victorians also do that. But the Romantics and the Victorians wrote sympathetically. And they were more interested in showing the working class. But realists like Balzac were not interested in showing the working class life. And this is indeed one grave paradox in the realist school. So Balzac and even Stendhal to some extent, were not interested in showing the working class life. And Balzac, as we all know, he was unsympathetic towards the proletariats. He was unsympathetic towards the working class people. So there is this inherent paradox in the realist school of 19th century French literature that is there with Balzac. Now the earlier title, the earlier title which was given to this huge collection of novels was studies of 19th century manners but later on the title studies of 19th century manners was made the human comedy so balzac created this whole plethora this huge plethora of novels he wrote extensive novels short stories and he combined all of that in the human comedy in a collection in a large collection which was known as the human comedy or le comédie humaine in french so this huge collection was earlier given the title Studies of 19th Century Manners. So this earlier title shows the fact that Balzac was writing to show the scenes of public and private life in Paris and that he wanted to show the mannerisms of the age in which he lived. That is why he created this name. That is why he gave the name Studies of 19th Century Manners. Because he wanted to show the manners of the age, the mannerisms of the age. He wanted to show the scenes of public and private life in Paris. And this is why his earlier title was more inclined towards a sociological study of the age. And Balzac himself was a student of law in Paris. He studied law briefly. And he learned about the emphasis on environmental factors in determining changes in life. 
So while Balzac was a student, he understood that the environmental factors play a very important life in determining the life of a human being. He also understood very keenly that the environment led to changes in human's life and the choices that we as humans make. So therefore, he wanted to show this big panorama, this panorama of life in France. And he wanted to illustrate all the major aspects of life in France to his readers. So this was the idea behind the human comedy, the large collection of works, his magnum opus, which was earlier given the title Studies of 19th Century Manners, which makes it amply clear that Balzac wanted to show the mannerisms of the age. Balzac wanted to show the private life of Paris, the public life of Paris. So this also shows that there was this keen sociological bent in Honoré de Balzac and that is why his, that is why we can call Balzac as a keen sociologist. Right? So he wanted to show this big panorama of life in France and he wanted to show all the major aspects of life in painstakingly detailed manners to all his readers. So this was the idea behind the human comedy. And Balzac was not interested in giving solutions to problems. Balzac didn't want to hold a mirror up to the society because he doesn't do that in his novel Old Man Goriot. But rather, Balzac is more interested to show the driving force of the society. He is more interested in showing what drives men and women in their lives. And in this sense, I would prefer to call Balzac as a very keen sociologist. Not just a historian, which he of course is, but a very keen sociologist. So he doesn't want to show or hold a mirror to the society, but rather he wants to show the driving force of the society. He wants to show what drives men and women in their lives, what is the social realism, what societal aspects actually drive forward a particular society and in this case the society that he talks about is the 19th century Parisian culture. So therefore Balzac is not just a literary writer, he is not just a French literary writer, he is not just a novelist but also a keen sociologist. And Balzac, Balzac as we know he is, he is a realist, he is, he belongs to, and he is one of the founding fathers of the school of thought. Of, of the of realism as an art form, but he is a realist with a difference. So he not only attempts to record life as he sees around him, but also attempts to understand the various social forces that go in the making of a society. And this is what makes him stand out as a realist from the other authors who claim to write in the realist mode. There are loads of authors who, who write in the realist mode. But Balzac is a realist with a difference. So he is clearly recording life as he sees every day in the 19th century Parisian culture, which is clearly exemplified from the fact that many historians, even today, speaking in 2024, even today, look at Balzac and his works to understand the Parisian culture. So clearly he is recording life very painstakingly very minutely, very dexterously. But then again, he also talks about the various social forces, the social forces that go in the making of a society. And this is exactly what makes him stand out as a realist from the other authors who were also writing in the realist mode. And in the novel Old Man Goriot, written in 1835, Balzac does exactly that. Now, towards the end of the novel, as you know, when the novel ends, and we'll begin, we'll begin with the novel very shortly in our next lecture. Towards the end of the novel, as Goriot twists and withers in pain on his deathbed, his long rantings, because towards the end of the novel, Goriot goes on for long. He, he rants about how his daughters have betrayed him. So, his long rantings and the last few pages of the novel. His long rantings are not just his pangs of filial and paternal betrayal, but also about the societal decay 
that Balzac wanted to show. Balzac also wanted to show how the various daughters have clearly exploited their father Goriot and how they have left him at the end. So, when towards the end of the novel, as Goriot is sitting, he is lying on his deathbed, so his long rantings are not just about the paternal betrayal, the filial betrayal that he has received from his own daughters, but also about the societal decay that Balzac wanted to show. So the world of the novel, Old Man Goriot, is a world where money matters and where money is the only thing that matters. So as we studied, as we discussed very briefly in the last class, class and money became very important aspects of 19th century Parisian culture. So much so that it is only money which matters in the 19th century Parisian city life that old man Goriot and Balzac tries to show us. So the world of this novel is a world where money matters and where it is the only thing that matters. And also it is interesting, it is, it is equally interesting to note that Balzac is not a political novelist in that sense. So his contemporary as we know is, was Stendhal. Balzac is not a political novelist in the sense that Stendhal was. And this is clearly evident in some of the novels like The Red and the Black and The Charter House of Palmer by Stendhal. Stendhal is more inclined towards the political aspects of the revolution, of the post-revolution French society. And But Balzac did not write about external factors in social formations or the historical events and the historical figures but was rather more interested in internal factors and social elements. So there is this difference between the contemporaries. When, when we come to Stendhal, he was writing more about the external factors. He was a much more political novel in that sense. But Balzac did not write extensively about external factors in social formations. He was not interested in historical events and historical figures, but rather Balzac was more interested in internal factors and social elements and the social forces which drive a society forward. So therefore, in the novel Old Man Goriot, we see how we have this character Eugene de Rastignac. So how Rastignac is a, he's a countryside nobleman. He is a young boy who comes to Paris as a student of law to study law. But he has very little idea that as the novel closes, he would learn the law of the world that permeates the high class, fashionable, aristocratic and highly pretentious Parisian culture. So Rastignac comes to study law as a naive young man, but he little does he have any idea that by the end of the novel, he would learn the harsh ways of the world that permeates the fashionable Parisian culture and society. He comes as a student of law to learn law, but he ends up learning the laws of the world in a very painful manner. And he knows, he knows that learning the penal code in the law books won't help him. Rather, learning the code of conduct in the book called Paris will help him build a career. So instead of learning from the various law books, perhaps Rastignac has to learn from the book called Paris. So it is Paris, the society, the city, the Parisian culture that Rastignac will have to negotiate in, will have to negotiate with to build a career. So the French realism in Old Man Goriot, even in some of the other works like The Lost Illusion and even in other novels by, for example, Stendhal's The Red and the Black. So the French realism shows Paris as the site for victory and ambition. So the French realism will not be complete without Paris as a city. So the pattern which Balzac has set in Old Man Goriot is followed even in other novels like The Red and the Black and The Lost Illusions. The Lost Illusions was written by Balzac. 
where a young handsome debutant middle class man tries to find his way to upward social mobility so paris is the site for victory and ambition so therefore french realism will not be complete without paris now we'll be also discussing as i mentioned in the beginning of this lecture we'll also be discussing about the balzacian jungle so what is this term balzacian jungle the term often associated with balzac's narrative refers to the thousands of characters drawn from every stratum of society from every trade from every class from every corner from every profession reflecting the whole of life in every aspect of human activity such was the mammoth project of balzac so this balzacian jungle represents the various thousands of characters drawn from every strata of society from every trade from everywhere so basically every character in balzac's works we'll see when we'll read old man goriot we'll realize that every character in balzac's work is full of life and vitality there are no boring characters at all each and every character that we have in old man goriot is full of vitality and each and every character has its own genius this is the balzacian jungle which i was mentioning where all sorts of men and characters live and where men and beasts are similar in their ambition their rawness and hard headedness we'll continue with the discussion of old man goriot the novel in the next lecture thank you all thank you viewers